everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to 12 Games of Christmas. This is a series of videos that we're putting out this week. We do this every year where we talk about various games that we think are good games for you to buy as gifts for people. We try to pick newish games and games that you can find that are available for you to get. You know, they games come in and out of print so quickly sometimes, so it can be difficult, but hopefully this will give you an idea of some great games for you to get. And today we're talking about kids. Kids games are very problematic for me in the sense that you can go to your typical store, your big box retailer, you can go to the kids section there and there's just trash. There's a lot of really, really bad games, maybe a game based on a a movie that just came out or the same old shoots and ladders and Candyland, and you want a game that's not only fun for the kids to play but also fun for you to play along with the kids so here are 12 games that i think are worth getting for your kids or other people's kids this holiday season we'll start with a classic and we mention this pretty much every year but this is animal upon animal although this year there are various versions in fact the holiday version of this just came out animal upon animal each person has a bunch of animals or in the Christmas one you also have some Christmas trees of wooden shapes of different types and you're just placing them in the middle of the table you roll a die it tells you how to place the animals on the top of the other animals animal upon animal if you make them fall you get a couple of the animals back the first person to get rid of all their animals is the winner works well it's a good game for kids to play against adults because the kids little fingers will probably beat out the adults in this game and it's a lot of fun the next two games use the same intellectual property, one that many of us, including myself, look fondly upon, and that's Scooby-Doo. The first one here is Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion. This is a one-time playthrough game, although you, it might take you more than one time to play through it, in the escape room genre. As everyone is working together and you are playing the different characters, reading stuff from this book, the story, and trying to figure out clues as to how to well, escape from the haunted mansion. It's very entertaining. Everybody works together in this game. It is a lot of fun. And my number three game is right along the same lines, Betrayal at Mystery Mansion. Now, this is a game in which you are going into one of many different scenarios. There are over a dozen different scenarios that you can play in this, where you go through and at some point, the villain shows up and one person plays the villain and everyone else plays the gang trying to stop that villain. And it works really well. As a parent, I can take the villain and my kids will band together to try to stop me and, and unmask me. And I would have got away with it too if it hadn't been for those meddling kids. Very fun, a Scooby-Doo betrayal at Mystery Mansion. Then we have Cupcake Academy. This is a great little game that uses plastic containers that look like the outside of cupcakes. And each turn, you'll turn over a card and you cooperatively are trying to move these cupcakes around, but you can only put larger cupcakes on top of smaller ones. If you ever played that little game at the Cracker Barrel where you need to move a pile of rings from one spot to another, it's just like that, but this time it's cooperative and everyone's working together. I found this to be marvelously fun. Then we have another food themed game, Piece of Pie. Who doesn't like pie? Criminals, everyone else loves pie, and even criminals are in jail because they've stolen pie. This game about taking pieces of a pie, each person's a secret piece of pie that gives them points, but there are other ways to score, and you are splitting a pie up into sections and taking these different sections, uh, or taking the different pieces. Once I pull a piece from the pie, I've opened up sections for you to take a piece of the pie. It's a fun little collect pie sequences that everyone will like. Now, I mentioned that there's a lot of games based on movies which are not good, but this one is good, and that's Kung Fu Panda, the board game. The Kung Fu Panda franchise, very fun to watch. Everyone, whole families enjoy it. This is a cooperative game in which you'll take on the different characters from Kung Fu Panda, and you'll go through fighting together, rolling dice and fighting through all the different minions to accomplish your goal. There are different missions that you'll play through, but you're all working together. It has a very strong story element and silly fighting against the various animal minions who are coming to come get you know take you out speaking of animal heroes the next game is rhino hero 
Rhino Hero is a game in which you are stacking cards. The cards are bent in this game. Don't worry, that's what you're supposed to be doing. And you're stacking them, forming a skyscraper, and then moving this Rhino superhero wooden piece as high as you can without knocking the whole thing over. Who wants to play Jenga after playing Rhino Hero? The answer is nobody. Rhino Hero is a Jenga replacement and a very good one. Slide Quest. Do you remember maybe as a kid you played that game where you tried to roll the marble from 1 to 100 without falling in any of the holes? That is exactly what Slide Quest is, except it's a four-player game where each person is controlling one side and you're working together to try to move stuff across the board without falling in the holes. And then there's different kinds of uh, cards and things you put on top, so missions will be different. But you're, you're doing that cooperatively. It is entertaining. And when the kids go to bed, adults will still probably keep playing it. Then we have Looney Quest, which has some similarities. In Looney Quest, there will be a, a picture, and you are attempting to accomplish some sort of quest to move across a board or fight enemies. But you do that by drawing on transparencies. Then you stick those transparencies on top of the board to see how well you did. So you're drawing over here, hoping to accomplish the mission of the, the quest. It works really well. And again, it's a game that kids and adults can be on equal footing when playing against each other. Heist, another cooperative game. This is a kind of a pass something around. You have this, this cube in the middle of you, and players have all these different pieces. You're accomplishing a heist, and you are listening to the electronic device, and it will tell you to pass this to this person, and then the person who has that presses a button, and then this person presses a button, and people have different roles, and they're passing things and pressing buttons, and you can't mess up. Every time you mess up, you lose a little bit of money, and you are trying to see how much money you'll have at the end of the game when you win, and the top of this device opens up a little gold Gold bars fall out. A very fun little fast-paced cooperative game. I mentioned one uh, escape room style game earlier. I would like to talk about another one. Escape room games are very popular right now and to now I'm picking Star Wars Unlock. Now the Unlock series uses an app which you can use on your iPad or your phone and it works together in conjunction with a deck of cards. And there comes, there's three different missions that are in here and they're very Star Wars-ish E where you will take, one of them takes place on the planet Hoth from The Empire Strikes Back. Another one you are trying to escape from an Imperial detention cell and you're all working together. And I played this with my family and everyone had a good, a lot of fun with it. You're working together to solve puzzles and do fun things on the app. And, and meanwhile, you have this very Star Wars backstory. It's just a very entertaining experience for the family. And finally, we have Sherlock Holmes Baker Street Irregulars. Now, this is a very unique style game in that it is four books. There are four graphic novels, like comics, and you give one to each person who's playing, so you can play one to four players. You can even have the kids, they can play it by themselves. And you will flip through this book, and each picture, each panel is the same usually. And everyone's reading the same story, but you're playing one of a gang of people who help Sherlock Holmes. But occasionally, one person may see a number on theirs that no one else does. For example, Ike is the big strong guy. So you might find a criminal, and Ike has the ability to tackle that criminal. Or someone else has a disguise, so they might be able to sneak around. So you'll look at a number, and everyone will turn to the page. But each person has special ways that they can get around, that they can solve the case and help out. So everyone has their own little thing that they're doing, and it ties together to make a choose-your-own-adventure story filled with puzzles in graphic novel form based on Sherlock Holmes. Fantastic. And those are my 12 games of Christmas for kids. I hope you enjoy that. Check out the rest of our 12 games of Christmas videos going up this week. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.